Larry Buchanan and Karen Gantz, who have written a new book just came out called The Gift of El Tio. This was published by Fuse Publishing, a local publisher, and we are very pleased to have them here. So welcome to Larry and Karen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This is the remarkable story of your time in Bolivia, and what, an, what a story it is. We'd love to hear a little bit about what is the gift of El Tio? Ah, the gift of El Tio. Well, uh, I'm a geologist. I'm actually an exploration geologist. And it's my job to go to some of the strangest places in the world, sometimes very, very remote, and to look for mineral deposits. And 1995, in a very remote canyon at 14,000 feet above sea level in southern Bolivia, I discovered an enormous deposit of silver. Uh, the company was very excited, of course, and they wanted to make a, a huge open pit mine. The only problem is there was a little village on top of it, and it was a Quechua village of about 400 people, and in order to make the mine, the village had to be moved. I was appalled. <laughs> we have very different perspectives on the world, and I come from a more liberal perspective, Larry, from a more conservative. And I feared that moving a village would mean the loss of a culture, loss of identity, whereas Larry argued that this would be the only chance these people had to escape poverty. Mm -hmm. So I challenged Larry. Um, as an exploration geologist, he has the right to make his discovery and leave. And I felt we were morally responsible if the town were to be moved, we needed to document what happened to the people. And that's how the book came about. What a story and what a, uh, what a lot of conflict inner and you're still sitting wow. here together. So there's a positive sign. <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah. Could you read us a little bit from so we oh, get a flavor of Would you like this? me to? Sure. Yeah, I'd love that. Okay. Um, basically, uh, I would just like to read a very the introductory paragraphs to um, the chapter 11 called the Corpa. The Corpa is a ceremony that the villagers did every first week of January to ask the gods for rain. Uh, <clears throat> I will introduce the Yacho. The Yacho is the, the shaman of the village. He can read tea leaves, he can tell futures, and he is in charge of the ceremony. The Yacho bent over the llama and cut her again. This time, a long downward slice from the left side of the throat going clear and clean to the middle of her black chest. He pulled the ribs apart with his hands, and with one more quick cut, he held high the still beating heart as an offering to his god, the Pachamama. Desperate arcs of blood squirted several feet into the air in erratic pulses, splattering on the yacho, the rocks, and the llama. The llama was still kicking, not knowing she was already dead. It is a good omen the yacho said. We chewed coca leaf in the wind on a grassy slope called Irukancha, just under 15,000 feet high near the top of Cerro Hayula. To the north stretched the white expanse of the Uyuni salt flat. Shimmering in the far horizon where a shadowy silhouette of a sleeping volcano hovered in the distant haze. The wind blew fast across the flats below us, then expanded and cooled as it rushed across the top of Cerro Hayula. Even though it was a clear, sunny, midsummer morning in the first week of January, we found ourselves bundled with many layers as we stood in a circle around the bloody llama. Between stamping our feet and breathing into our hands, we asked the gods for rain. 